All right, let's do some selected homework problems. And we're going to start with number 37, which uh, has us look at these and say, graph the equations and shade the area of the region between the curves. Determine its area either by integrating over the x-axis or the y-axis, whatever is more convenient. So 37 says inverse cosine of x and inverse sine of x. So y is inverse cosine of x. Y is inverse sine of x. And we're looking specifically at the region between negative 1 and 1. So if we graph these, again, I'm okay with uh, simple things. Actually, you should be able to graph this one as well using what you know about inverse sine and cosine. It should just look like a, a sideways sine and cosine with restricted, um, if you remember your trig. But... For something like this, I would probably still give it to you or let you graph it. Um, y is inverse cosine of x. And the second one is y is inverse sine of x, right? Make sure I'm not switching my things again. Great. And we're looking at the area between this, the region between these two curves. Between x is negative 1 and Positive one. What? Ah, okay. So we're looking at this this area right here. Let's copy this down. The so blue, we're going to do this right. Blue is inverse cosine. We're going to draw it kind of like this. And then orange, we'll say is red. That's inverse sine. And that uh, is directly below it. And no, it goes through the origin. Kind of like that. All right. From negative 1 up to positive 1. Positive 1 is right here. So we're going to look at this yellow area. And add it to this green area that I kind of graphed poorly a little bit. So again, we can do this in terms of x or in terms of y. Um, setting things up in terms of x is easier. Oh, blue minus red and then red minus blue for the other one. But the problem with that is when you integrate, right? If you look at the integral of uh, cos inverse cosine of x minus inverse sine of x, Uh, I don't know how to do that. I don't think there's a formula for that. Actually, we could get a, maybe get a formula. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think this is no good. I think this is bad. <laughs> so let's do it the other way. It might be possible, but it's going to be tricky. Unless I'm missing something really obvious and I'm hungry, so I might be. But let's write it as x is cosine of y. And as long as x is between negative 1 and 1, this is true. These are not the same. These are not the same. But on this domain, they're the same. And the other one, again, they're not the same. But on our specific domain, negative 1 to 1, they are the same. And now these integrals we can do. Integral of arc cosine, ugh. Integral of cosine, good. So instead of doing, oh, instead of doing yellow and, and green and adding them together, we're gonna have to set things up a little differently. Wait, this problem is really weird. I wanna make sure I'm doing it right. It's still gonna be those areas but if we phrase it in terms of like areas to the left of curves and areas to the right of curves, wait, it's still the same regions. We should keep the regions for now. But how do we express those thinking left to right? That doesn't seem easy. <laughs> um, I'm glad I'm doing this. Uh, because, right, if we, if we just look at... Yeah. 
because this gives us the opposite of what we want. Think about if we take the integral of to the left of the red. Left of the red gives us this. When we really wanted like something like that on the bottom or to the right. And there's some ways of dealing with this. There's some creative geometric ways and there's some more complicated algebraic ways. Um, that's interesting. Um, so a couple of options are going to be, one of the options would actually just be Let's break this in. We could break this into pieces. Break this into pieces and try to try to get everything. For example, um, if we are looking at, we can get this, this red region, no problem. We can get this blue region, no problem. Red is the area to the right, that's just gonna be the in negative integral of that red over that region. Blue is gonna be the same thing. Just like area to the left is normally positive, area below is normally positive. Well, we're to the, now we're looking at the area to the right of the curve because we're to the left side of the y-axis. So we can get the red and the blue areas, no problem. And then what do you have here? I wonder if there's a better way of doing this. But the yellow is just the white minus the red minus the blue. So that's how we can get that portion. We can call this, uh, I don't know, we can call them this left portion like A1. We have to get this yellow portion as well which we can split into two integrals like this. And that can be A2 and A3. And then again, there might be a simpler way of this, but this is the way that my brain sees this problem. And then uh, this last one, I, I believe, is also going to be a little tricky. We'll have to do something similar to what we did on the left. And uh, find the area to the left of uh, left of the curve. Let me draw another picture for that A4. Right. What we have is this going up, this going down. And we're looking at this green area. So what we can do is again separate this into a rectangle, a big white rectangle. and say uh, subtract out this area, this red area. And then we could also subtract out this blue area from the, from the big white rectangle. Will work. There's got to be an, an easier way of doing this. If you have found an easier way of doing this, let me know. I'm curious. So we'll just set this one up for time's sake. Um, hold on, I'm also just gonna double check that I'm not completely losing my mind. There's no, there's no formula that I have forgotten about for the integral of arc sine. There is a formula, you can derive it with integration by parts. We do not know this formula and uh, you do not have access to it. Yeah, that does refresh what I thought. Great. Okay, so integration by parts we'll talk about in chapter three. Um, so this is a good uh, challenge problem. Let's find these areas. So area one. Oh, and again, this is going to be area four. Nope, oh, wrong color. Doesn't really matter. So a combination of calculus and geometry. So area one is going to be that whole box 
What are the dimensions of this box? Well, let's look. The very top of the box is at a y coordinate of pi. The very bottom of the box is at a y coordinate of, ne of negative pi over 2. So the height is pi plus pi over 2. The height is 3 pi over 2. What is the width of that box? Well, x coordinate of 0, x coordinate of negative 1. The width is positive 1. So this distance is positive 1. This distance is pi. This distance is pi over 2. Find that area of the box. And then we're subtracting out the blue area. Now the blue area is the opposite of the integral. So subtracting out the opposite of an integral means we actually are going to be adding this integral for the blue guy. That's going to be the integral from y is this to y is equal to this. What are those y coordinates? Pi over 2 up to pi of this as a function of y. This blue graph is cosine of y. And then similarly, we subtract out this red area, which again, we also, it, that red area will also be the opposite because we are to the left of the y-axis. That's the analog to being under the x-axis. Area should always be positive, but this integral will give us a negative answer. We are going to then add this integral. We know this y-coordinate is negative pi over 2. We know that y coordinate is 0 of this function, which is sine of y, with respect to y. There's a little typo here. It should be the sine of y up here, not the sine of x. So you can calculate this all out and get your first area. And if you don't believe me, by the way, let's just see. The integral from pi over 2 to pi of, we'll just look at that blue one, Cosine of y with respect to y is that negative answer, as we expected. You could calculate this all out for time purposes. We won't. Get 3 pi over 2 plus, because again, sorry, minus, we're subtracting out that blue area, so it becomes that minus 1, and then minus the red guy, which is the integral from negative pi over 2. The zero of sine of y dy is also negative one. So what this comes down to is this becomes a minus two, three pi minus four over two, however you want to write this. Three pi over two minus two would also work. So that's our first area. And I'm hoping we played our cards right. That area should also, again, let's write x equals negative 1 to give a better visualization. If we're looking at the area between these two white bars and the curve, that should be, again, that yellow area, this 3 pi over 2 minus 2 should be the same as integrating over x, which you can't integrate over x yet. We don't have integration by parts yet. But... This should just be arc cosine of x minus arc sine of x dx. And there it is. Again, we don't know how to take the antiderivative of this yet. So it's easier to set up as x normally, but because we don't have the tools to take those antiderivatives, we have to set up it in terms of y. Setting up in terms of x, this would only be two integrals. Setting up in terms of y is going to be a lot of integrals, but that's okay. So that's A1. I'm going to box it in red just to make it easier to find later. And now let's find A2 and A3. So A2 and A3 are going to be more straightforward. So again, be really clear about what's happening. This is the y-axis, and that's the x-axis. So A2 is just the area to the left of the blue curve. Area to the left of a curve is just a simple integral. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this picture with me. <laughs> All right. 
So A2 is just the area to the left of the curve, which is cosine of y, integral of cosine of y dy, that's it. Um, the y-coordinates, well, we need to know what's the smallest y-coordinate and what's the biggest y-coordinate. We already know the big y-coordinate is pi over 2. Smallest y-coordinate is when they're equal to each other. It's pi over 4. Similar calculations that we did before. And again, you could calculate this all out. This is antiderivative of cosine is sine. You get sine of pi over 2 minus sine of pi over 4. And I think that's going to be 1 minus... Uh, I'll just, do, I'll just do it out real quick, right? Sine of y from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Minus sine of pi over 4, which is uh, um, 1 over root 2. And that's what we get. And there are a couple ways of simplifying that, but let's just stop there for now. To so do the same thing with a3, this portion of the red this portion of the yellow area. Take a pause the video. Try to do it on your own. Try to find that a3. You should get the integral from y going from 0 to pi over 4 of the red, which is arc sine, or which is sine of y. Now, very similarly, I think, I think, these, I think a2 and a3 are going to be the same, right? So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So you get negative cosine of pi over 4, which is negative 1 over root 2, and then minus 1. Why am I, why am I off by a sine? Plus 1. I'm not off by a sine. We get 1 minus 1 over root 2. So a2 and a3 are indeed the same. And again, we can kind of check our answer. a2 plus a3 is this portion of the area, which if we could, all right, if we could calculate this, it would just be the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1 over root 2 of arc cosine minus arc sine. Is that indeed 2 times 1 minus 1 over square root of 2? Hey, it is there. So our A2 matches what we think it should be. Our A2 and A3 together, rather. Great, so then all that's left is this A4, which is again a little messy. All right. If I copy this, uh, if I copy this, it's fine. If I copy it to a new page, it actually makes the page out of order, but that's okay. So we need this A4, it's just going to be the box, length times width. Again, what's that full white box? Well, the x distance is 1, the y distance is pi over 2, so the whole white box is 1 times pi over 2. And now we're subtracting this red area, which again is the integral from 0, y equals 0, to y equals pi over 2 of the red function. The red function was arc sine, so sine of y dy. And we're also subtracting that blue region, which is a little bit different. That blue region, and again, there might be an easier way of doing this, but this is the way I see it. That blue region is the area between the two curves from y equals 0 to pi over 4. And this is, pi over, this is a y-coordinate of pi over 4 right here. Of blue minus red. And again, there's a, a different... Oh, yeah, there's definitely a different way of setting this up, but this way works just fine. Of blue minus red. And blue is, our co is cosine. Minus red is sine, dy, and that'll integral will give us area four. Again, you can do this on your own. You get the area four is going to be, uh, 
but we might just actually this might only give us a decimal approximation of this because we're going to have the sine and cosine of pi over four let's do it real quick why not let's get an exact answer 20 minutes into the video no problem pi over two minus antiderivative of sine is negative cosine from zero to pi over two and then again, antiderivative of cosine is sine. Again, antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So this turns into a positive. From zero to pi over four, we get pi over two plus cosine of pi over two minus cosine of zero minus, be careful with parentheses here, sine of pi over four plus cosine of pi over four minus sine of zero plus cosine of zero. Again, watching out for parentheses. Pi over, cosine of pi over two is the X coordinate at pi over two on the unit circle, which is zero. Cosine of zero is one. Sine of pi over four is the same as cosine of pi over four. They're both one over root two. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. And we get pi over two minus one minus, this becomes two root twos. We had one, we added them together. Minus a one, pi over two minus one minus two over root two plus one, the ones cancel. And this area is something really wacky. Pi over two minus two over the square root of two. It's got pi's and square roots. That's area four. Again, let's check our answers. Is this what we expected it to be? Pi over two minus two over square root of two. Is that equal to the integral from X now goes from one over the square root of two. All right, that's this X coordinate right here. Up to an X coordinate of one. And then, yeah, you switch the order because they switched which one's on top. Yeah, same value. That's our area four. So let's add it all up. Our final answer, our area, this area of the region is area three and area two. They, those are the same. So we just double it. Two times one minus one over root two plus Area four, which is pi over two minus two over root two. <laughs> Plus area one, which is three pi over two minus two. And now let's simplify. Woo! We get two minus two over root two. Well, we got pi over two plus three pi over two is four pi over two. That's two pi plus two over root two, minus two, plus two, minus two, minus two over root, it's just two pi. <laughs> there's got to be, there's got to be an easier way of doing this problem. I must have just done the most, <laughs> the most backward. This is good practice, guys. Good practice for visualization, good practice for geometry. Good practice for something else. I'm I'm really curious. Cause we don't have access to arc sine and arc cosine antiderivatives yet. I'm really curious. Was there a was there a, a better way that we currently have access to that doesn't require integration by parts or weird integration formulas for setting these up? What what a wacky problem. Yeah, that. That was fun for me though. I don't know how useful it's going to be for you, but it was fun. And I did show a lot of I show a lot of things, right? How to break a problem down into multiple problems. Remember areas under a curve is a positive integral. Area above a curve is a negative integral. Areas to the left is positive. Areas to the right is negative. And using what we know about geometry with rectangles, putting it all together, One of my favorite things about doing these videos on my tablet, as a side note, 
is really that I don't have to worry about like fitting it all on paper. I can add as many pages as I want here. And I love it. It also looks cleaner to erase, right? It can perfectly erase something. Well, that's not how I imagine that problem going, but let's do 39A, which it just means I want to set up problem 39. I just don't, I don't want to go and do the whole thing. I just want to show you how to set these up. Once you set them up, it's just count, it's just chapter one, which, you know, chapter one's easy, right? For the following exercises, find the exact area of the region bounded by the given equations, if possible, if you are unable to determine the intersection points analytically, use Desmos to approximate the intersection points with three decimal places and determine the approximate area of the region. So for 39, it says between y equals x squared and y equals 1 minus x squared in square root. So we know what these look like. We don't need Desmos to graph these. All right. Don't need Desmos, so we can graph these by hand. Um, let's use a thick marker. X squared, that's a parabola. I need to color code things because we found out what happens if I don't. This is just a standard parabola, like so. What is the other one? This is half of a semicircle. Sorry, it's a semicircle, which is half of a circle because y squared is equal to one minus x squared, which is the same as x squared plus y squared equals one. It's a circle of radius one. And specifically, it's only the positive one, not the negative. So it'll be the upper half of a semicircle of radius one. Upper half of a circle, which is a semicircle. We're trying to find the area between these two curves. So blue is on top. And we need to find their intersections. Let's use a different color. We need to find their intersections. Well, they intersect when their y coordinates and their x coordinates are equal, set up a system of equations. When is x squared equal to the square root of one minus x squared? That's one way of doing it. It involves some substitutions. It's very possible. You can do it. Another one is to say, let's use this. And as long as y is positive, this is true. This is the same. And we all already know that y has to also be x squared. So that's equivalent to saying, well, y squared is 1 minus x squared. And we know that x squared is going to be y here. So you can also solve this quadratic, which is a little easier. And again, just we're assuming y is positive here. Is this circled guy is not actually the same as the semicircle, it's the full circle. But as long as we say y is positive, it's the same thing. So we get y squared plus y minus one equals zero. That cannot be factored. You can use the quadratic formula, or you can uh, complete the square. You use the quadratic formula, you're gonna get that y is uh, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a. And that gives you two values of y. But uh, we only want one value of y. Because even though there are two points, each of these points has the same y value. So if we do that, um, we know we're going to need the positive one because the negative one will make this whole thing negative. We only care about positive y. So really, we only care about this positive. And we'll say, let's look at negative one plus the square root. This becomes one plus four, square root of five over two, or just negative one half plus root five over two. That is the y coordinate. So this is the point something, comma, negative a half, plus root 5 over 2. Now to find the x-coordinate, well, we just know that uh, x-coordinate is going to be the square root, plus or minus square root of this y. <laughs> so y is x-squared. We know the y-coordinate to solve for x. So this one specifically is going to be the square root 
of negative a half plus root five over two. <laughs> so the easy problems, right? I covered those in the first five videos. So in the selected homework problem, I really just want to choose all the more exciting problems that I give you. So these are, I, I, these are the things that I want you to not have to experience alone. I know I assigned some pretty interesting homework problems. Here they are. And of course, this other one is just going to be the negative version of that. This other one will be x is equal to negative square root of negative one half plus square root of five over two. So let's set up the integral. And again, it said, if you can do it exactly, do it exactly. If you can't approximate with Desmos. You all can do this one exactly. All right. Like, what would be worth like one point for getting this? All right, so we need to integrate over the region from negative square root of negative a half plus root five over two up to positive square root of negative a half plus root five over two <laughs> of the blue minus the red. So blue is this. Minus, the, oh no, Jason, this is a disaster. Because I hope that you remember that we can't take this antiderivative. Um, the way that we calculate this area is, oh, it's the area of a semicircle. But the problem is, we don't want the area of the whole semicircle. We just want the area of the semicircle between the x-coordinates. All right, it's too zoomed in, but between the x coordinates that are denoted by the yellow points. So this is how you set up the integral, which is really what I wanted to do here. Um, and then you'd have to use technology to, to go past this. Uh, or there might be another way. I think, I'm pretty sure there's another geometric way, but it's more complicated and requires more complex geometry than I want you guys to do. So that's the setup of this problem. Next problem I want to look at is 45. Let's see what this one is. All right, same idea. Um, y equal, wait, it's the same function too. Y equals, again, circle of radius one. And now we have a parabola. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure in this situation, now you're not going to be able to, to find their, their intersection by hand anymore. Actually, maybe you can, because this right hand side, right, is x plus 1 squared. So that tells us that um, since we're only looking at positive values here, positive values of y for their intersection, we can take the square root of both sides. So maybe it works out. No. Oh yeah, it does work out. You don't do this method. This is fun. This is cool. There's a, there's a lot of fun problems in Calc 2. Uh, look at it this way. The way we have it written down here. And now... No, no, I don't think it does work. I don't think it does work. Because you get the square root of 1 minus x squared equals this. And what I was thinking is when you square both sides, it'll work out. But if you square both sides, it's actually really bad. Because mu multiplying this out, you're going to have a fourth degree polynomial with all terms. that I don't think you're probably going to be able to factor. And that's what I was thinking might have worked. But no, I, there might be a way. But I'm I'm leaning towards there's not a way. So... The reason I put this problem in here is because I wanted to show you what happens if there is not a way, what, what I'm expecting from you. So again, there's a tiny chance that there's a way, but uh, we're not going to worry about it. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the other one is again that g of x equals square root of 1 minus x squared. We're looking for the area that's trapped between these. So that'll be from negative 1 positive one. 
All right, that tells me that maybe there was a way. Um, because it's a nice number, and a lot of times if there's nice numbers, there is a way. Um, but I still don't see how you do this analytically. You could guess and check, but I'm not super sure of what you'd do any other way. Doing this with a substitution method seems pretty pretty dicey. And I don't see how you do it with elimination either. But anyway, yep, we get that uh, the integral goes from negative 1 to 0. So we're looking at the area under area in this region of the g of x, again, which is the circle portion, semicircle portion, minus the other one, which is the parabola, dx. And again, just like the last problem, you'll have to use uh, a computer to calculate this into, oh, actually not like the last one. We can calculate it exactly, because that is just the area of a quarter circle. So this first part of the definite integral is just a quarter times the area of a circle, pi times the radius squared, minus the integral from negative 1 to 0 of this parabola. And this one should work. We get pi over 4 minus, this becomes 1 third x cubed plus x squared plus x evaluated from negative 1 up to 0 should be able to just evaluate no problem. That's going to be when you plug in 0, it all zeroes out. Minus, when you plug in negative 1, there's a lot of negatives running around. It becomes negative a third plus 1 minus 1. So many opportunities to make mistakes here. Minus 1 and plus 1 cancel out. We have three negatives. So it becomes pi over 4 minus 1 third. Now I'm hoping... That the integral from negative 1 to 0 of the green, square root of 1 minus x squared, minus the white, x squared plus 2x. Whoa, why are we still inside that square root? Minus the white, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. With respect to x is hopefully what we had, pi over 4 minus a third. I was never worried. I knew we'd have the right answer, just like always. There we go. Cool. Let's do the last problem. And that was, that was almost boring, right? Almost boring. Give me, give me some messier ones. <laughs> Tortoise versus the hare. This one should be pretty easy. So the speed of the hair is given by the sinusoidal function. I'm going to copy that down. H of t is 1 minus 1 minus cosine of pi t over 2. H for hair. Whereas the speed of the tortoise is t of t is 1 half arctan of t over 4. All right, we have arctan. <laughs> I take it back. This might, maybe this will be messy. Um, where t is the time measured in hours, speed is miles per hour. All right, find the area between the curves from time t equals zero to the first time after one hour when the tortoise and hare are traveling at the same speed. What does it represent? And it says use a calculator to help with this. So if we do that. H of t is, one, I forgot, 1 minus cosine of pi t over 2. And t of t was 1 half arctan of t over 4. So it said we're starting. We're looking at zero. Um, what did it say? Um, 
speed is measured in miles per hour. Find the area between the curves from the first time t equals zero to the first time after an hour where they have the same speed. So they do intersect like right here, but then it really wants us to go all the way to this point, the first time after an hour. They also have the same speed three hours in. And again, you can see that uh, the hair starts off, doesn't really move, then the hair goes really, really fast, going way faster than the tortoise. And eventually the hair is going the same speed as the tortoise and then takes a break and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if this thing goes longer, long enough, the hair is just always oscillating. Eventually, if this is speed, the turtle's ramping up speed. You'd think the turtle would be going at a constant speed, but it's not. Speed is constantly increasing. Oh, it's not a constant. It's arctan. It just looks like a constant because we're really zoomed in. All right. So, again, let's connect some concepts here. This turtle is eventually going to really go fast. <laughs> um, but still, I don't think it'll ever go as fast. I think the, because we, what we know about arctan. Yeah, never mind. Let's, let's, let's connect concept, concepts, but not those ones. So, what is the integral under velocity? The area under a velocity curve is the net change of position. It's the displacement. So, what's the area between two curves? What's the area between two velocity curves? Think of that marginal cost and revenue function. If the integral, uh, the area under the turtle's curve, velocity curve is the displacement of the turtle from the starting point, and the integral under the hare's velocity curve is the displacement of the hare from the starting point, well then the area between those curves would just be the displacement from each other. So if that's positive, hair minus turtle is positive. That means hair is that much ahead. And if hair minus turtle is negative, that means the turtle is that far ahead. So in this region, well, there's this tiny region where the turtle is going faster. But for most of this region, the hair is going faster. If we were to calculate this by hand, we'd have to do two integrals. What is it asking us to do? Um, find this area between curves. So again, we will have to split this up into two. And what does it represent? Find the intersections. We're not going to find these intersections by hand. No siree. I don't think that would be possible. No, I don't think so. So we will use a calculator. So the first interval from 0 to 0.102. And that's where the turtle is faster. And then the next one is where the hare is faster. Hare is on top. 3.446. And this is going to give us the area between these two curves from 0 to 3.446. Now we'll represent how far in miles they are when they start going the same speed again. All right, so we can calculate that out with technology. Because again, we're not going to integrate an arc tangent equation for the same reason that we weren't integrating arc cosine. Uh, you do need uh, you do need integration by parts. I think that I think it has something to do with natural log. Because you do integration by parts. Yep, there's a natural log right there. Great. All right, so integral from 0 to uh, point 0.102 of the tortoise minus the hare. 
plus integral from 0.102, 3. Point, was it 448? 446, close, of the hair minus the turtle. And we get uh, 3.263 miles. So that's after this amount of time, for this amount of time, when they're going the same speed again, the hare is three miles ahead of the tortoise. And then that does lead to the next problem. If uh, we change, change the function a little bit, ask you to find out who won the race, who's ahead. Again, this means that the, uh, the distance between them, the hare is ahead and it's this many ahead. So hair is 3.63 miles. It doesn't say the hair has gone that far. That's far how far it is ahead of the tortoise. And that's the interpretation. All right. There you go. Hope you enjoyed these videos, these problems. Hope you enjoyed this section. Welcome to chapter two on applications. Bye-bye.